Henry Wood was an early thought teacher. He lived in the late 19th and early 20th century. He was a successful man, not really rich in today's terms. I mean, I don't think he would be like, he had enough money to be like a Warren Buffett to give away $25 billion, but he was well off. He had all the money he needed to do what he needed to do and wanted to do. But he became afflicted with several diseases. And the medical field could not help him. Nothing they could do helped him to get over these diseases. So he turned to something that was just beginning to bloom in the time of his, this particular time of his life, and that was something called New Thought. He took the principles of New Thought and applied them to his life, and over the course of time, he was healed of all of these diseases. And when he realized his healing, he began to write about them. He began to write about the principles of New Thought. And he applied them more and more to his life. He was, as other New Thought teachers have said, the first person to actually take them public. And by that I mean he wrote about them and he published them so that a wider audience could read about them. A wider audience than those people who had discovered them and were being healed of their own afflictions. And he would give away his work so that more and more people could find their own healings. In the process of writing and teaching and living the principles of New Thought, he developed what, something he called mental gymnastics. And this was simply a way of learning to refocus your thought. Instead of dwelling on his illness, he began, began to dwell on how he wanted to be. He began to dwell on the principles of new thought. And he began to look at what we know as our source, God. And he would keep his focus on God and what he wanted rather than his illness. He would spend time every day in the silence and think about God and let the th his thoughts of God just settle into his mind until they became not just a part of his mind, but a part of his body. But every cell in his body resonated with the knowledge that God is everything and God is in every cell. And so as he spent this time every day thinking about God, thinking about wholeness, thinking about perfection, thinking about who he really and truly was. And he stopped thinking about his illness, and he stopped thinking about how it was affecting his life. And he began to get better and better and better. And so this is what he meant by mental gymnastics. You know, as an, a, an athlete will spend days, hours every day, to get his body or her body prepared for an event. If she's a runner, she'll spend time running every day so that she can reach the goal that she has set for herself. But she also does other things besides run. She also lifts weights to make her body stronger. She does stretching exercises so that her body will be flexible. These are what the things that an athlete does. But an athlete also does the mental gymnastics as well. An athlete trains his mind as well as his body to prepare for an event. And this is what we do. This is what Henry Wood advocated us to do, is to prepare our minds as though we were in a race, to spend some time every day preparing our mind as though we were in a race and we prepare our minds by watching our thoughts 
And if we don't like the thoughts or we see that the thoughts that we're having are, are creating something in our lives that we don't want, then we change them. We change the focus. And the interesting thing about what Henry Wood and all the New Thought teachers taught back in the late 19th century is that scientists today are beginning to say the same things. There's a doctor named Jeffrey Swartz who has written a book about the research that he has done on the mind and the brain and, and patients of obsessive compulsive disorder. And he has taught these people to change their way of being, people who could not stop what they were doing that was, ru that was ruling their lives. For example, one person was obsessive about washing their hands constantly. They couldn't stop washing their hands. No matter what they did, they had to go and wash their hands and then wash it repeatedly. And some of us do this whether we realize it or not, may not be washing our hands, but we go back and check. How many times do we go back and check to make sure we turn the coffee pot off? Or we turn the burner out from underneath the coffee pot. Did I do that? Oh, I can't. <laughs> Obsessive compulsive disorders, all of us have them to a certain degree. I would bet if you start looking at things that you do obsessively, you can change that as Jeffrey Schwartz has shown, by refocusing. Every time you have this inclination to go and wash your hands a million times, you stop. You think, wait, that's not who I am. I don't have to do that. And you do something else. And this is what Henry Woods taught about mental gymnastics. You're refocusing. You're refocusing on what it is that you want. And by this, you can change your life. And then there's this man named William Larkin. He is a, a modern man. He lives today. He's written a book called Growing a Positive Mind. And his equivalent of a mental gymnastics is he calls it emotional gym because he focuses on feelings. And his emotional gym is this. Several times a day, you stop what you're doing, or even in the process of doing what you're doing, and you repeat these words over and over and over. You can repeat peace, love, joy, and gratitude in whatever order you feel like. And you repeat them. You repeat peace until you begin to feel in your body. You begin to feel peaceful in your body. You repeat it. And then you go move on to love. And you repeat love until you begin to feel love in your body. And so on. And that's what the mental gymnastics and the emotional gym are all about. Is to teach you how to refocus. How you refocus so that you can Stop what you're doing that you don't like and begin to do what you do like. These mental gymnastics and emotional gym can become, these words can become the ambient way, resonance of your life, of your body, of your thinking. You will, it's, it's like a, a default. We all know the word default from our computers. These emotions, these feelings, these words, can become your default so that you don't have to continue on the way you've always been. And how on earth can doing all these things help you to achieve your vision? You all have a vision for your life, whether you know it or not. There is a vision that there for your life. And if you don't have one, these Exercises can help you to find the vision for your life. And the reason they can help you is that they teach you to go to that place where we all want to be anyway. And they can teach you this, you don't have to wait. They teach you how to be what we want. What is it we want? Everything that we do, no matter what shape we think this thing that we want takes. The bottom line of, of that is we want to be happy. When you get up in the morning, do you think, oh, I just want to be unhappy today? <laughs> Anybody do that? No. But guess what? The majority of us are most of the time because we think we don't have what we want 
And what we want is all that is going to help us to be happy. What we don't realize is that thing that we're wanting, that we think will make us happy, we can have the happy feeling right now because it's a choice. And that's a surprise to so many people. That's a surprise to know that we get to choose and we can choose to be happy any moment of the day. And that's what these exercises do. They teach us to choose to be happy no matter what's going on in our lives. And some of us have some pretty ugly stuff going on in our lives at any given moment, any given week. Something comes up, and what we're learning is it doesn't matter what that is that's going on in our lives. We can choose to be happy, and most of us do. And that's what New Thought is all about. That's what Henry Wood was teaching us so many years ago. More than 100 years ago, Henry Wood, Ernest Holmes, Charles Fillmore, Phineas Quimby, all of our ancestors of new thought, this is what they were teaching. Happiness is a choice. And we get to make it any moment of the day. And it's so easy that you can do it mentally. Mm -hmm. Negativity is something that we grow up with and a lot of us don't realize but it's not our normal way of being. But we also are realizing that either one is a choice. And sometimes it's difficult to make that choice. But you learn that being positive, being happy, is more fun. You don't want to go back. Positive, joyous living is a choice. No matter what's going on in your lives. Viktor Frankl found this out so many years ago when he was a prisoner of war. He was in a camp and he realized early on that the only way he was going to survive was to make the choice to stay positive, to remember who he was. And he survived that. And he became a famous psychologist simply because he made the choice. This is who I am, and this is who I'm going to be. When you learn to make that choice every day, then you will discover there is a vision for your life, and you will become that vision. It isn't something you have to do. It isn't anything you have to pursue. It just becomes second nature to you because it's something we grow into. Our vision for our life is buried in ourselves. And only by discovering who we truly are will we find that vision. And only by using these mental gymnastics and this emotional gym will we discover that vision. They are our tools to dig up the buried treasure that is our vision for our lives. You can learn how to use your emotional gym with or without my rubber bands. All you have to do is spend a little time with yourself in the quiet every day. That's all it takes. And you are using the mental gymnastics of changing your focus from what it is that you don't want to what it is that you do want.